everyone and welcome back and this is the episode 5 for prisma and in this play in this video we are going to talk about prisma with mongodb earlier we were talking about prisma with the postgres and or maybe mysql now in this video the difference is we are using nosql database that means that means we are not using postgres or rdbms or something like that we are using Mong mongodb database okay and how Prisma works with MongoDB database that we are going to explore in this video with simple express TypeScript app and we will also write some couple of APIs for that. Okay, so what we are going to do here, here is we have this simple example. I have a bare bone example of uh, simple server.ts and here I have a simple Prisma schema file. Okay. So now you will see what is the difference here from whatever we were talking earlier. This is a NoSQL, right? That means we are using MongoDB, and here the provider will be MongoDB. TV features, I think we can cover that. And this is the client. This is the client, this is the data source, and here we are defining the models, right? Models, the syntax, if you see the for the models, is still the same. Like if I just use model. Uh, like tags then it's kind of simple it's kind of a similar we have so id and here is a label for the tag or there is a user right we can also talk about the posts the posts created by the user this is the post this is the tag and here we have id id which is now the id has a special syntax not like okay id default auto increment something like that because in the mongodb id is an object id of that document because these are document based uh, storage here every row is considered as a document and represents a json document right that contains a unique object id and we are mapping this with the underscore id so whatever is the db generated property we are going to get for the id that will be mapped with underscore id and that will be known as object id for that particular collection rest all the other attributes like we were adding the unique um, all the the map all the mappings date time columns are kind of simple or similar here we can what we can have is id here we can have the post just the body and the description about the post now have you, now let's talk about two things here prisma generate and the prisma migrate have you ever thought of prisma migration for the nosql database no right so prisma migrate command will not work we can use prisma generate to generate the client models for this entity what we'll do is go to the terminal and I already did npm install. It's like we are using same kind of modules, Prisma client Prisma. Okay, and this is Ubo APIs. We already have not modules, so I can just run a couple of commands. Let's say I wanted to do npm run. Let's say Prisma migrate. Inside Prisma migrate, it will just check. Okay, do you have dot env? file is there where you have mongodb url and we already have mongodb database up and running through the containers if not i need to spin up i think we don't have it what i will do is i will just go to the containers and i will run the mongodb and from there i can just do docker compose up it will spin up mongodb and the prisma containers for us as we were doing earlier for postgres we have already seen now we are talking about the mongodb provider right the provider here is a mongodb in the prisma schema file and mongodb container is up and running what if what will happen if we try to run the prisma migrate command you can see npm run prisma migrate it loaded the things from the dot env data source db the mongodb provider is not supported with the prisma migrate command I mean, we don't need to deal with anything uh, like migration for the NoSQL database. I 
I mean, I never heard of it. And we don't need a migration. We just need a Prisma generator command. And why we need Prisma generate so that the Prisma client we have should be able to populate all these models inside the Prisma.user, like Prisma.user, Prisma. whatever the models we have that will get populated. So based on the Prisma schema file, we have three models: user, post, and the tag. Let's see what will happen after this command. Kind of same kind of command which will generate the Prisma client for us. Now I think we should be able to see. We can see the tag is there, the post is there, and the user is there. And all these models are available on the Prisma object, Prisma.user. You can do all the operations: find, find unique, find first, create, update, delete on all these. And the rest all the things will work in the same way we, you were doing with the RDBMS like Postgres. Because this is a Prisma is a like a ORM wrapper. It is taking care of the underlying implementation. Okay. So we will write some implementations, write some APIs to understand how the Prisma API works for the MongoDB models. Here we are not maintaining the separate models. It's like we are maintaining only the schema.prisma file that will take care of everything. We just generated the Prisma client with all the models. Now what we will do is let's create a simple APIs. Let's say simple auth APIs, create user, uh, uh, login user, update password, something like that. Okay. Okay, let's build the APIs now. So we are going to start with uh, simple routes. So we can create uh, controllers in the root folder. It's like MVC style. We can write everything inside a controller. We are not writing a lot of uh, models here. Controllers and we have routes. And what we are going to do is uh, inside server.ts, we can define our root route. Let's say import. We are going to deal with uh, users. So user routes from. So we already have created routes. There we are going to create user routes dot user routes, and we can just say app dot use. These are mostly auth routes. App dot use all will be prefixed with the auth base auth routes. The auth routes we have to define. Call it as the auth route. Because these routes will be mostly for the login, registration, logout, getting the token after the login, all these things. And inside routes, we can create this file.ts. And inside controller, we can create auth controller. Okay. So in the auth routes and also let's have one middleware folder. Because we are going to return some token after login. So we want user to validate to the token when he is accessing the private APIs. So it's auth. Is auth middleware.ts. Okay, let's start writing. Here we have express server running. We have the routes. So first of all, we can define all the possible routes we are going to use in the application. Auth routes, we will import the express router. We are writing TypeScript. Import router from express. And we will bind everything to this router. Let's get the instance of this router. And here we can see router dot post. Right, first post method is let's say register. And we are going to call the register method from the controller. This is the handler function. And let's define all our routes, which is register, login, refresh token, logout, delete token. Okay. 
so another is a login method is login we have refresh token we have logout and let's say delete account where we will just pass the user all these methods we are going to define inside our controller login logout register and delete account and we can import all these things once we define these things from our controller inside controller i think we have auth controller and for now let's import all these things and then we will create all these methods exactly the same here it is refresh token log out and the last one is delete account okay now let's go to our auth controller and define all these methods these are like express handlers and here we are going to use the prisma client that's important point so prisma equal to new prisma client and we are going to access everything from the prisma dot user right and here let's say our first method is export const register this is express handler so it will be a sync and it will be accessing all the request response types request response is coming from express we can import those things import request response from press i'm just writing it so you get some feeling and request response we can we can quickly finish this and come to the implementation part here from the request body i will get all the user properties right is export const register and here let's say you have email i mean i will do use joy or some other modules to validate the body that here we are just writing to learn things request dot body dot email now all the attributes which you wanted to populate you can add it here let's see i have other things like username password first name last name then finally i will create a hash password that i can just use some hash password method that i have to create okay i think we do have some utils already created which i have done that so hash password and they just need to pass the password value which we just have received okay email username i will be getting password first name last name okay so we have everything ready now we can just put a try catch wrapper and define all the our operations inside this i will be a little fast on this because these are like very very basic things we have done lot many times await prisma dot user now this is important part because how we are going to use the models prisma dot user dot all the other operations like delete delete many find find one create create many i think these were exactly the same when i was talking about the postgres with prisma here we are going to do the find first because the email is unique and now it all uh, it all comes how to write the prisma api is like find find one find first find unique find an update and all these methods so here we are doing email we already have email property if we are able to see okay user already exists then what we are saying user already exists then the uh, user already exists and we can just throw an exception return response dot either to an exception or just send a status so here the 409 config dot json 
just set a message user already exists it once that is done now we can simply create a user because now we already know that user doesn't exist we can create a new user prisma.user.create inside this what we do is we pass the data object as a payload and inside data we pass email username first name last name password password will be hashed password and think of encrypted password what else is left email username first name email username first name hmm. promise is not assignable this password okay this is hashed password we are good and then if everything is right we can simply say response dot status 201 because this is a create dot json simply create it okay if you got any error then just we can return another status which is let's say 424 or 500 Something went wrong, right? You can do it better way. So this is the register. Now I can use the same method for the login. We don't need to worry about writing same thing over and over again. This is another method which is doing the login part. Okay, here I will get the two attributes, email and password. Let's first get them, email and the password from request.body. Then you can validate okay the user uh, is there or not. If user is not there, you can do it with the simple email query find unique. In this particular case, users needs to be there, right? If user is not there, means user is coming out null that we don't want. Then we can simply say 404 user not found. With this email and customize it and then we can just verify the password how we can verify it uh const password verified this is like a boolean and how we will verify it we will just compare the password compare password this is just a method we have already written user dot we have our own password from the database and the password which we are passing because we have to create a hash version of the password and then compare the password if password verification failed then again let's say password verification failed and we have to return the response saying that okay you're not authorized you are passing invalid password we can say 401 user not found with this email and password and we if we are able to pass this particular stage that means user already exists right password verification is successful we can create a we can create an object which we wanted to put inside a token so what we want is user is getting logged in if user is successfully logged in we'll just want it to return a token so we wanted to create a simple payload which we can put inside the user token email and that is user dot email and then it i think that should be enough then we can create two different type of tokens access token and refresh token we are not using auth zero or something just creating our plain methods generate access token and just pass uh, the payload const refresh token here we can call generate refresh token and pass the payload now let's also check the utils what it contains and we'll just return the access token 
that refresh token response and refresh token here we can for now we can just create uh, the token and return it so this is access underscore token and we can return the access token and this is 200 login is successful we'll talk about this refresh token logic and what we are doing is we are just doing gwt dot sign refresh token it's like okay you are just increasing the expiry this is ex uh, refresh jwt secret this is action so i mean how it works this works in a simple way jwt dot sign to create a token jwt dot verify to verify the access token so once you are coming up with this token we will use jwt dot verify with the same secret currently while creating jwt dot sign okay and uh, to set the refresh token what we were doing is we were actually setting up that in the cookies of the response headers so this is what i was calling that refresh token and inside response object we have we will just put the refresh token so we are generating two token access token and refresh token refresh token we are just sending in the cookies let's say you can put some cookies name equal to something else refresh underscore token http only so its cookies are http based just to add on to the security okay this is auth route auth controller now we are able to do the register and login okay this is just create the hash version using argon library and to verify it's just like you have the password from database and the password which you are sending from the the apis then you just verify it so this is your hash password and the string password it will verify and it will tell you it's like same big crypt library also you can use for the same so we are done with the register and login so what is the next we can talk about other routes let's say we have the refresh token which will just generate uh, the refresh token or verify the refresh token we can also talk about delete account or logout so let's create those methods port const now this session is a little bit uh, different here we have sessions with cookies also now in cookies we are just putting the refresh token just to avoid any confusion okay so if i want to say log out i mean when you use the token based authentication you cannot expire a token that is the hard dependency because these tokens are stateless until unless they are getting expired you cannot expire them okay either you generate the token and there is some kind of expiry mechanism which you have then only you can expire them and but otherwise these tokens are stateless only after expiry they will be expired so here on the logout what we just thinking is just set the refresh token empty and response dot status It's not the, the best authentication system I'm building. I just wanted to show some example. So I'm just playing with that. And here is message is okay. Okay, now login register and all these things. We have another method is uh sometimes you also wanted to get the, the refresh token. Right? So for that, what we will do is let's create another method go to the routes and we can check what all methods we have register login refresh token that is to get the refresh token and refresh token we will be able to get only if you have already received a refresh token um, after just doing login and we are doing it in the login we are sending the refresh token in the cookies http based cookies this is register this is login this is i need to change the body for this this is refresh token
so here is this method what refresh token will do is it is accessing the request and response first of all i need to get the cookies okay so here is the try so first of all we need to get the cookies from the request object so request token here what we can do is request dot cookies because we are already using cookie parser and here i can say access token as a string because here you can see in the utils i am setting up this uh refresh token so we verify access token yeah refresh token so i'm sending this refresh token post login so when you you are coming back to me to say okay give me another refresh token then i will just first check okay are you sending me this refresh token cookie if yes then we are good then what what i will do is i will just verify the refresh token and i will generate the new refresh token okay so what can we do is we have received token so we will just validate this token because uh, we need to validate what is the payload of the user initially say const payload is signed null and here what we are doing is verify access token verify refresh token method and we will just pass the token which we are getting from the cookies we will get the payload this payload is of type any let's say for now okay let payload from here now okay everything is good so we got let's say the token was valid and we got the the user user id because while creating the token while creating the access token and all if we go to the login then we will see what we are putting inside this token i think we are inserting the id and email so after decoding first thing first uh let's first get this user really from database because we don't want to use the id which is inside a payload so what we can do is await prisma dot user dot find unique based on the condition we have i mean we have the id we can use that id payload dot id so we got the user object now we can create the another payload on payload and here i have a id user dot id email user dot email and i can return the response just by saying is return response dot status do we need to just get this like this i mean most probably the user won't be null but you can also check here if user is null then you can simply say is return response dot status 404 dot json this is the disadvantage that you have to do manually everything user not found in the express here we got the user now response dot status 200 now we already know that user will always be there because we are returning from here only if user is null response dot status 200 dot json and we can simply say is message okay and we can generate the token access token is we are returning we can generate the access token generate access token and we already have token payload we can just pass that this will create the token now you can see this the logic refresh token means 
you need to first identify that you are the valid user either you can pass the exist to existing token which but most of the time this has been already expired so refresh token is something we have to generate to the user based on some attribute based on some credential which user is passing so we are getting this access token which we set in the cookies while doing post login so we got the got the token we validate the refresh token we will get the the user id we validate this user really exist in the database if yes create a new payload and just generate the new token and send to the user okay so now let's see everything in the demo